Plug the fridge? Yes. Oh, that other so Amina, it is now, it looks like it's about 11.39. If you'd like to start the cast, and, and before the actual experiment starts, we can do a little bit of talking, kind of setting up the experiment. We can probably go live now if you'd like. Great, yes, I agree. Um, I will go live and let you take it away. Okay, excellent. Okay, we are, I'm hitting the button now. And we are live. Welcome, everybody. We are coming in live from Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington State, near the Pacific Ocean. This is our astral projection experiment. We are conducting an experiment today. We have a research team assembled in the room. And our goal is to try to collect some sort of indication that astral projectors or remote viewers are actually able to manifest and interact with items that we have on our table or in fact engage in some sort of interaction with me directly here. My name is Michael Kundu and I'm a paranormal researcher. Today I'm joined in the room with a team of other researchers and our goal is to try to see whether we can collectively get documentation in some format that people have been able to manifest into this space. We've advertised this experiment right across the world. We have participants that will be coming from the UK, from Germany, from China, from Japan, India, and right across North America as well. So for those of you who are planning to join us, now is the time for you to start collecting yourself, focusing, developing whatever meditation you might need and try to reach our location. Once again, we are in Port Townsend, Washington State, and we have provided the geographic coordinates as well to our location. We are in a fairly distinct castle, and it should be fairly easy to find for those who are able to project themselves. To our remote viewers, we have a number of items on our table that we are using as control objects. We have a pendulum. We have candles lit, and we also have a specific control item in the center of the table. If you look at the bowl that's lit up, in that bowl there is a small chest, and within that chest what we have is a single token item that you can try to determine. We also have an alphanumeric code, eight digits altogether. And again, for those who are able to let us know what those items might be, and we'll give you up to 24 hours in order to let us know. Reach us out, reach out to us either by email or by text message or through this podcast as well. Then there will be a reward for anybody who accurately determines what that control object and that alphanumeric code would be. So with that, what we'd like to do is start this experiment exactly at 11.45 p.m. and that's Pacific Standard Time. That will be a different time right across the country and some of you know that you've also got to take into account daylight savings time. So one of our team members, can you tell me how close we are to 11.45? It's 11.42 right now. So we have three minutes left to go and we'd like to make sure that we stay within the exactly defined half an hour time frame for this experiment because as I mentioned, we've communicated this experiment's time frame right across the world. But when we start the experiment, we invite everybody who's capable of projecting, remote viewing, psychic reading, to interface with us. Interface with the objects on our table, or interface with me. And at that point, we will stop talking, unless there's technical information that we need to pass on, but the focus will be on trying to discern anybody at this point reaching out to our experiment site. So with that, I'll invite anyone to reach out, again, interface with the objects, or interface with me directly. Start your meditations. One minute left? Two. Two minutes left. At this point, our control objects, the candles are not flickering. 
the pendulum is not moving. For those who are capable, we also have a set of chimes over the table. And they can certainly be activated as well if you pass through. We're in a fairly exposed location. The turret has windows on all sides, so we will be watching very closely all the elements. We were taking audio readings, we're taking video recordings, we're using infrared cameras as well. And you'll see some of the researchers move back and forth around checking temperatures. But whatever you can do to reach out and make an indication that you've arrived at the site, that is our goal tonight. Time. 11.44. The experiment has begun. It is March 9th, 11.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and our experiment commences. Take a thermal reading around my neck, please. I feel wind. I feel wind moving across my entire head. Infrared and thermal, please. EMF reading from my head, please. Eleanor, would you take a temperature reading on the gauge that's immediately to my right, please, and see if there's any difference? How does that relate to the one on the screen? Same. For those projecting, move something on the table. Move the pendulum. Make the flames flicker. Is anybody here?
take a reading of that candle on the front left side. Derek, are we close to 11.50? The time is 11.50. Take random readings. Projectors, viewers, psychics interact with any of our control items or interact with me. Infrared and thermal. Please look at the control object in the center of the bowl. See if there are any readings from it. Any white spots in the bowls. Projectors, viewers, psychics attempt to interact with the control objects on the table. Nola, do you still have that light on top of the candle <laughs> on the left side? Yeah, it's on both of them now. But I think it might be this, just the thermal red. Feel free to take that from a different angle on this side, perhaps. Let's see if that changes it. Projectors, if you can focus on the pendulum, 
please try to move the pendulum. Astral travelers, projectors, psychics even. Try to focus on the pendulum. Move the pendulum. Again, any astral projectors, if you are able to generate a wind flow, a sound, any kind of contact at all, please do so. Interact with me directly, interact with the items on the table. We invite you to show us that you are here. Jillian, can you take some night vision of the control chest in the middle of the bowl, please? Mm -hmm. Thermal and infrared, could you look behind my neck again, focus on the back of my head, record whatever you have. Continue to feel the temper, temperature variation in the back of my neck. It was cold at first, but now it's getting quite warm. Eleanor, if you could check the gauges on either side of me behind me by the windowsill and see if they're any different from the rest of the room.
projectors and travelers, focus yourselves on the right candle, the candle on this side. Attempt to make the flame flicker. Make it move. Make it move dramatically. Midnight. Please take the readings for midnight. Astral projectors, again, please give us some indication that you are in the room with us. If you can move any of these items, if you can move the candles, if you can move the pendulum, work the chimes, or give us any other indication that you are with us, please do so. Can you do some thermal imaging around my upper torso, please? Jillian, if you could use the IR camera and perhaps take a few snaps. My shoulders as well, please. the teeniest little reading right there here. It is gone now. By the pendulum? It was right in this area. Interesting. I the which Projectors, if you can move the chimes, if you can move the pendulum, please do so. Projectors focus, astral travelers focus on the wind chimes immediately above the table. Remote viewers, focus intently on our control object. The control object in the middle of the table. Peer inside. Try to determine what is in that box.
take readings of the candle and the light. Projectors, let's try this again. Focus all your energy on the candle directly in front of me, in the open bowl. Make the candle flicker. Make the candle flare. Try to interact with that candle. Try to make it move in some way. The one directly in front of me. Seems the other two are the ones that are actually moving. There's a pattern to this game. There does seem to be. Fenna, could you take two still shots of either of those candles, please? Okay, let's try to focus this again. Projectors, psychics, all focus your attention on the pendulum. Try to make it sway, try to make it spin, circle, whatever you can do. Focus your attention on the pendulum. Let's try something different. We have a number of microphones around the table. At this point, we will try to go silent for about a minute. Do whatever you can to create or generate a sound. Our recorders will try to capture any sound that you can create. Any visitors, psychics, projectors, travelers, make a sound.
Okay, we're going to try something a little bit different at this point. If anyone is present in this room, projectors, viewers, psychics, or any other entity, I invite you to contact me, push me, hit me, do whatever you can to let me know that you're here. I invite physical contact. Go ahead and push me, move me around, do whatever you can. You have my permission. Let me know that you're here. No, I'll focus them on me. Please. It looks like there's somebody sitting outside the window. That's what I was thinking. Make contact with me physically. Push me. Hit me. What is our time? 12, 13. We have two minutes left in this experiment. Now is the time to make some kind of physical indication that you are here. Please interface with any of our control objects or again, make contact with me directly. If you are present and capable of doing so, interact with us. So at this point, we are going to be ending the experiment. If anyone is present, or if anything is present, at this point we do ask you to leave and depart and to end your time with us. With that, we'll call an end to the experiment. It is now 12.15, Sunday, March 10th. For the last half hour, we've attempted to show some kind of presence some kind of capability for astral projectors and astral travelers to reach us at our location. We will go through all the data that we've collected, the audio, the video, some of the temperature readings, some of the infrared footage that we've collected, and we will issue a report. We will write and try to come up with some kind of a, a report or a journal of this particular experiment. And we recognize that even though we didn't have anything clear, appear, or manifest, that does not mean that we've had a failure here. At this point, we're still waiting on folks who may have tried to determine what was in our control box, so they have 24 hours to reach back to us and let us know what they believe was in there. And then, if nothing else, at least we've established a protocol with our experiment. We hope others will attempt to do the same thing, and we wish them luck and hope that they have successes where we apparently did not have anything manifest tonight. This is all part of a continuum of research. And we appreciate your time, but at this point, 
we are finished for this evening's experiment. Thank you for your attention. We will answer any questions that you might have. And again, the truth is out there, to coin a phrase. The reality is that we need to keep trying these experiments in order to see if we can come up with some quantifiable data to show that astral travel, astral projection, remote viewing does in fact exist. Thank you for watching us. Good evening. Okay, so we'll call it quits. We can turn the lights up. Amina, did we have any contact or any questions that people had through the podcast at all? Um, not any particular questions, just good commentary. Um, and one person made a guess uh, on the box content. Go ahead and send that to me via email, and then we'll analyze all the input that we get from folks. I have to tell you that throughout this evening, I didn't feel any physical contact, but I did have significant tem temperature variations on the back of my neck, and that could very well have been because of the windows behind me. There's no question about that. We do have some thermometers on either side, but it seemed as if there was a moving wind going past me continually, and then it wasn't just getting cold. It was actually getting warm at times as well. But again, these things are unquantifiable. But at least that was the one thing that I did experience. Did anybody else here in the room experience anything? Did they feel that they were touched? Or I noticed, Nola, you said that there was a shape outside the window. Did you get anything on film? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever we get, we're going to analyze all the information. And we'll definitely post it to the podcast so we can do a review. Does anybody on the research team have any thoughts, any comments that you'd like to I make? I just want Nola? to say when... I was over there, and you were talking about the your air and stuff. It looked like something was sitting right here on your back. On the thermal? Yeah. I'd and like to see those pictures. It's just like about that big. And it could have just been your shirt, you know, being buckled or something. But when you leaned forward, I didn't. it wasn't like that. That's interesting. Your shirt wasn't buckled. So we'll look, because I, as I mentioned, the isolation was the back of my neck, the sides here, just the bottom of my ears, and so... So that was kind of strange. I, again, I can't rule out that it wasn't the temperature from the windows because we do have quite a bit of a wind gust outside. So either way, we'll look at everything we have and try to come up with some conclusions and a report for you at, at this point. Uh, you know, I think we're, you've made a good go of it. And uh, yeah, sometimes you don't get the results you're after, but that does not mean that there's no paranormal. You know, proof of absence is not absence of proof. Or is it the other way around? Absence of proof mm -hmm. is not proof of absence. So that's mm -hmm. par for the course in paranormal research, and uh, we'll, we'll look at what we can do next. Hey, Michael, Any thoughts? Um, I made a, uh, I had a few observations about things I noticed. Uh, do you want me to send them to you or, sure. or tell you what they are? Or? Go ahead and, and share them at this point. I think uh, I'd love to hear what you've got. Um, Amina and I, uh, I think we both heard the, the chime or something that sounded like the chime at uh, my time at 346. Um, and then at 401, we, I heard a beep go off. I'm not sure what the beeping was. Was it was it one of the detectors it could have been or one of the it camera. Yeah. yeah, it could have been. I think the beeping was clearly one of our detectors or the cameras. I think it may even have been this FLIR uh, thermal camera as well. The chimes. Now that's interesting. We didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything in the room. Did anybody hear anything? That that's really interesting because we do have a fairly nice chime. It would have sounded like this. Was that similar to what you heard? Um, we just thought she's going to get back and replay it, but uh, yeah, it was definitely some sort of uh, noise like that. It wasn't quite as pronounced. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think we were all listening, and we didn't hear anything in this space, in this room at all. Yeah, And I should tell you, just for those who are still interested, here in Manresa Castle, the suite that we picked for this experiment, room 302, it's called the Tower Suite. It does have a reputation of having some paranormal activity. There were apparently some fatalities, suicide, and, and that kind of thing that did occur at this castle. Don't know a lot of the details about how accurate and how true this might be, but it's definitely the kind of space that does have an energy. And so that's part of the reason that we picked this location, not so much for uh, I mean, you know, it's a sensational, neat-looking place as well, but the reality is that there is some history here too. 
So right. there is always the chance that aside from the astral projection or the remote viewing or the psychic activity, that, and this is part of the reason why toward the end, I was actually encouraging anything that was in the room to interact with me because there may be some kind of a, a latent presence or residual presence that is here in the castle. And again, a lot of people have said that it's been focused in this particular suite, 302 at Manresa Castle here in Port Townsend. So people can look it up on Google and do their own research as well. But that's interesting about the chimes. Anything else? Yeah, that, yeah at, at 401 when I heard the TV go off, that's, that's when the candles really started to flicker. Um, so I don't know if, that, if you guys were picking up anything, um, but at 401 the candles really started flickering and I heard the TV go off. Um, and then at 406, when you did ask the candle in front of you to flicker, it, it did flicker. Wow. Um, you must be important. seeing different things because I was looking and I didn't see it move at all. And okay. the point that you made, though, Doug, is kind of interesting because I, I noticed that I kept looking at when, uh, when we had folks walking around the table and taking readings, when Eleanor came over, Tiffany or Nola were rock, walking around taking readings, I was expecting the candles to move after that slightly. And it was odd because it wasn't when they moved past it, it was quite a bit after that. So it could have been just ambient air. We don't know what the reasoning was behind that. We tried to limit that using the glass surrounds. But yeah, I mean, if, if you've seen something that we haven't seen, it's certainly possible, but that's pretty, that's pretty uncanny. That's Why pretty do you uncanny. think they're dancing like crazy now? <laughs> well, because I'm talking. My voice is probably blowing a little bit across the table. It could be a bunch of different things, but I think it has to do with the fact that um, I'm, I'm talking a lot, so there's a likelihood. Yeah, we had a, initially we had planned on using dry ice, as Doug we talked about before, but we found out that at this time of the year it's difficult to find it here in, in the western peninsula of Washington State, but the intention was to put the, the dry ice in the bowl. It would have been a really good control uh, medium and we encourage anybody who's looking at emulating this particular experiment dry ice sitting solid is something that easily picks up motion that goes past it or any energy that might go over the table so we encourage <coughs> folks to consider using dry ice a very small bath of it so it kind of sits there um, unfortunately we weren't able to do that in this experiment but we definitely will if we uh, redo this experiment in the future and there's certainly a possibility that we will Anything else? Any other comments, observations here in the room? We have a number of folk here. We've got, uh, looks like, if I do a quick count, it looks like we've got 10 people all together here. And the team put a lot of effort into this. Some folks came from pretty far away. And I want to express my appreciation. I'll name them all in the report, in the post-experiment report that comes out. But it's a lot of work. And I recognize the people who are involved in this from right across the country, if not overseas, you're working till late in the morning, and that's definitely appreciated. All of us are looking for evidence of something. So the reason we do this is because in most cases we believe, but we want to have that compelling bit of evidence. And that's what we're searching for. And that's a very noble attempt and an effort. It's a very noble thing to take on because after all, we, we believe that there's something beyond simply our own biological essence here. We've got to have something that, that carries beyond it. And that's what we're after. That's what we're trying to find out. And in doing that, it's important to be honest. It's important to conduct the experiments. And if you don't have immediate results, you accept that. You accept that. But that doesn't stop you from continuing your search. And that's what we're doing here tonight. That's what we've tried to do. And that's what we'll continue to do. So with that, I think we will sign off this evening. We've got a lot of tired folks here, and I'm sure a lot of you are tired as well. So thank you for taking part in this and watching, and uh, we'll, we'll try something else in the future. Thanks so much. Sounds great. Thank you, Michael. All right. There signing off. There's a slight reading behind you. You mentioned And it. I just want to see if it's yeah, let's try still that. there. I have ended the stream and I will send you the replay link as well as some guesses that we got so far. Oh, that is incredible. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh -huh. I think we're, we're calling it. Quit There's speak. nothing. Yeah, you were right there. I saw it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing, nothing now, here. But there was something. Yeah, yeah. I thought it may have been. That's really because interesting. Because there's an right outlet. About there. Yeah. 
Oh, what time was that? There was a point where it was it was after midnight.